This is ACMI News, recognized nationwide as the first place winner of the 2022 Hometown Media Award for News Access. After 10 years on the job as Arlington's town manager, Adam Chapdelaine closes the door on this chapter in his life as he looks for greener pastures in Boston, literally. This week, he reflects on his several accomplishments here in town before his new journey begins. Tis the season for fishing and also for danger. We found a lot of fishing gear discarded in Arlington's waterways, in the trees, and on the ground. This doesn't bode well for wildlife in these parts, and we'll show you what's being done to clean up the mess. Arlington's farmer's market is back, bigger and better than ever. Flowers, produce, jams, jellies, even mead. Yes, mead is for sale. How American is that? And this week, Arlington saw a good moon rising, a time when our natural satellite neighbor fills our heart with song. ACMI News starts right now. From McLennan Park to Spy Pond, from Poets Corner to the Mystic River, we have Arlington covered, giving you stories that count from people who care. Reliable, trustworthy, dependable. This is the 2022 nationwide award-winning ACMI News. This week marks the end of a game-changing era for the town of Arlington. June 17th was the last day for town manager Adam Chapdelaine, who served as town manager since 2012. Hello, I'm Summer Maxwell. And I'm James Milan. Mr. Chapdelaine helped navigate Arlington through several initiatives from improving transportation to setting many environmental goals to dealing with the COVID crisis, all while overseeing the everyday business of running a tight-knit community. ACMI News was able to talk to Chapdelaine on his last week. He told us he's leaving to follow a passion of his, but that doesn't make leaving Arlington any easier. And that goes for many residents whose lives were touched in some way by his intellect, his humility, and his affable nature. It's those qualities many of us are going to miss. There's a lot of emotions. Um, there's relief, right? Uh, it's, I think everybody acknowledges, myself included, that it's a hard job, a challenging job, but you make a ton of human connections in this work. And I, I don't think I'm leaving those connections, but I'm changing those connections. So thinking about how I'll keep in touch with people, people that I've, you know, in some ways grown up with, right? I've been here for 12 years, quarter of my life, half of my adult life. So it's, it's gonna be, a, it's a mixed bag of emotions. and. With Friday being the last day and you know folks putting together uh, an event which I'm very grateful for I'm, I'm trying to do all I can to not tear up by uh, by Friday I mean I think when I think about it the thing I'm most proud of is the team and one of the hardest parts about becoming a manager is you have to learn that you don't actually do all that much but you help enable people, empower people, guide people, hopefully, uh, you know, help them do their jobs. And over time, we've been able to build a really great team here. There's still a great team in place. And when I think about, um, you know, the thing I'll be most proud of is all that team effort, right? All the great work of the Health and Human Services Division. And when I think about the role I played in that, I hope I was a great blocker. Right. I hope I dealt with a lot of the external things that needed to be dealt with so that they could do their job and serve the public. When I think about the planning department and the work they've done on transportation and sustainability planning, I hope I've been able to empower them to take bold steps and make bold recommendations to advance the community. So when I think about you know, the work I've done here, I think about the team and all that the team has done together. still thinking about what to say on Friday, right? It's this mix of, you know, I don't want it to be sad. You know, I, I want it to be happy. I, you know, I want people to be happy for everything that's been accomplished here as a team. And I hope people are happy for me as I go on to the next chapter. Um, but I want to be real too, that when, you know, when change happens, it can be hard for people. So I, ha I haven't written anything yet. Um, I'm going to work on that over the next few days, but I hope I can just express to people how much I appreciate the time that I've spent here um, and find a way to meaningfully do that on Friday. All right, when you take time off, I know when you're in the public eye and you're very committed, you're very busy with your job, 24-7 you were doing this for over a decade. You tend to do something goofy. 
uh, over the summer? Are you going to grow a beard, or a ponytail? What what can we expect? Is there going to be a physical change? What's going on? I don't know. I, I've I've played around with the beard over the pandemic, so that that's played out. Uh, I shaved the head before, the, like when the pandemic started. So that one's done. I think a tattoo might be the only one left. So we'll see. I what would know. the tattoo say? I don't know. I don't, maybe a, you know, a town for life or something. We'd have to. We'd, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. No promises. You are still the town manager. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
left behind on some of the town waterways. So we decided to check for ourselves. ACMI News Director Jeff Barnes says those residents who called us were right. The spring season giving way to summertime will never disappoint Arlington residents craving a little serenity at Hills Pond or appreciating the soft ripples lapping at the embankments at Spy Pond. But as tranquil as these scenes are, there is a serious problem to be found, a problem that's very difficult to see unless you really look for it, and then you realize it's all around you. It's hard to detect with a television camera, but take our word for it. This branch at Gould Road has four monofilament lines hanging from the bottom branches, the result of an angler's careless casting method. Fishing line neglected, left on the ground for someone else to pick up, or worse, left to decompose, which will take up to 600 years. The monofilament line, um, unfortunately, when wildlife gets entrapped in it, and it does, and we've seen it here in Arlington and in several instances, um, it leads to a slow death, whether from starvation or the inability for them to move about and live their lives. And the calls that I get for animals that are entangled in fishing line or that have a fishing hook stuck in their neck or their beak, or, um, it's incredible suffering. It's incredible suffering. And again, you know, caused by humans. It's heartbreaking. Um, there was a raccoon that was so entangled so entangled in fishing line that it, it was immobilized. So this animal had struggled and struggled and struggled and whoever line this long was got more tangled and tangled and tangled until it lay down and slowly starved to death. Um, basically, what a death. Environmentalists will tell you monofilament fishing line is by far the most dangerous kind of debris encountered by wildlife. It easily entangles and can kill turtles, frogs, small mammals and birds. We tried talking to a few anglers while we were covering this story outdoors they didn't want to talk on camera, and that's understandable. It's an environmentally sensitive story, plus they were outside just wanting to relax and fish. However, off camera, they told me they do everything in their power to make sure the area they're fishing in looks the very same as when they arrived, or even better, before they left it. And town leaders are very quick to say they're all for fishing in these parts. That's not the issue at all. The main concern is this. You have some people fishing here in the Arlington area who arrive with monofilament fishing lines, lures, and fishing hooks in their tackle box, and after a few hours of fishing, they leave that gear in the trees or on the waterfront, knowingly or unknowingly, endangering the wildlife. Use the proper equipment. You shouldn't be bringing the um, line or hooks that you'd be using at the ocean or at a really large lake here. The fish that you'd be catching here is really small perch and say sunnies. Um, so uh, that's the first step. And then um, proper casting technique. So we do ask you when you bring your children here to just give them a couple of lessons so they're not um, uh, losing their equipment and, and their, their gear up in the trees first or second casting. One effective solution that's been making its way around town is this, so-called periscopes, like this one at Hills Pond. Disposal units for anglers to throw away their hooks, lures, and fishing line while keeping our waterways as clean as humanly possible. Town leaders say with just a little common sense, everyone can enjoy the natural beauty and the natural resources that Arlington has to offer. Bottom line, it's good manners to leave things in better condition than how you found them. You know, it goes back to leave no trace. For ACMI News, 
I'm Jeff Barnt. If you want to learn about how you can promote clean water initiatives, here's one place to start. The Boat US Foundation is a major leader in promoting safe and clean waterways. Go to their website at boatus.com foundation. Again, that's boatus.com foundation. Are you looking to get quality food and buy local at the same time? Looking to save on gas by not driving for miles to your nearest grocer? The Arlington Farmer's Market at 29 Mystic Street is once again open for business. From flowers to fresh veggies to fresh fish, jams, jellies, and baked goods, you'll find it all at Arlington's own Farmer's Market. Believe me, I sure did. So this is our first week, um, and we go all the way through the end of October. So we're here every Wednesday, 2 to 6.30. Uh, we have a full complement of uh, vendors who are selling produce, vegetables, and fruits. We have a fish lady who goes every uh, Wednesday morning to the uh, pier at 4 in the morning, uh, hooks up with the fish fisher guys, uh, decides what she wants to bring to the market, cuts it herself, and brings it out to the market. Uh, let's see what else. We have a bread lady, um, Mamadou's Bread. They're based in Winchester and they come over to the... They also have a storefront in Arlington right up on Mass Ave. Uh, they come to the market. We sell all vegetables, cauliflower, broccoli, all the vegetables you can think of. But for today we have strawberries, we have broccoli, we have broccoli rub and some flowers, lettuce and all the different greens. And is there anything that you see that people particularly like that you guys have here? We don't like everything, but no, it's the strawberry season, so everyone is going for the strawberry. Okay, and what do you guys like about coming to the farmer's market? Out here? It's just like bringing fresh stuff to the local people. So that's the main important thing, to support the local community. Oh, I like to meet the public. You know, you sell wholesale, you don't meet the people who are buying it. And that's what's fun, because you get ideas too. And what do you think distinguishes these farmers markets from just, say, going to your local grocery store? I think the quality of product you get. You know, you go to the farmers and you get it that has been picked that morning or last night, just before they loaded the truck. And here, like, this is made relatively local. It's not sitting in a warehouse for six months, but also it's better flavor than you'd buy at a grocery store with no high fructose corn syrups and all the other chemicals you find in some of the foods. We have some vendors who have been selling here for decades and others who are just starting out, but they can all agree that the quality, community, and togetherness found here at the Arlington Farmer's Market is not something you can get in your local Isle 9. Well, I like supporting local agriculture because um, we need to make sure that we keep producing food in the area and the m money that's spent locally stays local and uh, gets reused over and over and over again. So I always try going to local vendors and small business and locally owned places too so the market is a is an old market we've been around since 1997 so we're one of the first farmers markets in the area and because of that we were able to uh, get anchored by a lot of farms so we have like six seven farms that come here pro providing different things whereas some of the newer markets only have one or two maybe three farms at the most because there are only so many farms to go around so we have a lot to offer, and the big thing that we offer is the quality. Now, I, I must say that food is, is expensive, but food at farmer's markets has always been expensive because there's a lot going into the cost of producing it. Um, but people are willing to pay that because of the quality. So when corn season comes in and you come to get corn, that corn has been picked at 5 in the morning and then is here just a few hours later. So that's about as, as good as it gets unless you raise it yourself. Arlington is a great supporter of the market and that's why we're able to stay in business for so many years. Uh, and I just hope that people keep doing that. Arlington's Farmer's Market is open every week from 2 p.m. to 6.30 on Wednesdays through the month of October. And stop by and visit us. ACMI has its own booth at this year's Farmer's Market. We hope to see you there. When the Beatles arrived in America and performed on The Ed Sullivan Show in February of 1964, how many of you remember that? Paul McCartney was 22 years old. This week, Sir Paul turns 80. 
And to celebrate this monumental occasion, the Regent Theatre has many celebrations planned for this master music maker. There will be singers, and they want you all to sing along. So let me introduce to you the one and only Leland Stein. It's with our house band, the Ultrasonic Rock Orchestra. They've been with us for 18 years. They're incredible, like, um, repertory company. hundreds of songs in the repertoire. Previously, just in terms of Beatles stuff, they did the complete Abbey Road and White albums on their 50th anniversaries. And now we had to uh, commemorate Paul McCartney turning 80. And it's really, it's an exciting thing because we're bringing in right now, I think, three generations of Beatles fans. Grandparents with their grandkids, parents with their parents. And it's just, it's great. On June 23rd, the Regent continues this McCartney Fest with a show called Maybe I'm Amazed, a Beatle Bash of Epic Proportions. Just go to the Regent's website for showtimes, regenttheater.com. Again, that's Regent Theater and that's T-R-E dot com. A splendid time is guaranteed for all. If you were craving fast food last week, shame on you. The true and bona fide Happy Meals could be found at Arlington's Greek Festival at the only place a Greek fest should be held in these parts. St. Athanasius the Great Greek Orthodox Church at 4 Appleton Street. ACMI was there earlier this week, and we can tell you the hitos and baklava were scrumptious, fresh, thoroughly, and undeniably Greek. I look forward to this. And as you can tell, it's only been open for what, four hours? The food is delicious. Everybody is so pleasant. I just love this, you know? It's, I wish we had more things like this. Well, you know, it's an Arlington tradition at this point. We started this festival on a hope and a prayer and a wish way back many decades ago at our location at 735 Mass Ave. And it was a beautiful congregation at that time, beautiful community, smaller church. And we moved up here to Appleton Street, and we've been up here, oh, I think 17 years at this point or more. And um, we just keep on growing and growing and growing. And people come from all over Massachusetts, and sometimes outside of Massachusetts, to come to our festival. We serve, we serve close to 15,000 people or more over the course of these three days. This is the best. There's no question about it. Somebody here just has the touch. I just don't know what it is, but they, they go to great lengths to make this work. And they get better every year. And you come from an ancient culture. This isn't Ben Franklin we're talking about here. We're talking about Greece. We're talking about dishes that are centuries old and the tradition just keeps uh, perpetuating and you're helping with that, that must make you very proud. Very proud. I mean, the, Greece has a lot of culture and a lot of passion in all that they do, all of us Greeks do. But when we can share that, people share that best through conversation and food. 
and sharing our food is sharing our culture, sharing our traditions, knowing a little bit about the different parts of Greece, where we all come from. I mean, people come together here. Families wait for a year. When we had the pandemic, we weren't able to host. And we really call it hosting because we're hosting people. This is our parish, you know, people like myself, all of the volunteers you see on the parish council uh, have grown up in this community. I was baptized in this community in 1980, 1981. So we all have a lot invested here. And when we can share these things, it means the world of difference. We can share it to all of Arlington, something that is really unique. Every year I come, and I'll be back again tomorrow because it's remarkable what they do here. A great time was had by all, and everyone went home full. Festival organizers also wish to thank more than 50 sponsors who helped make this year's Greek Fest a gastronomic success. How have you been enjoying the Celtics Warriors NBA Finals matchup? Pretty exciting, huh? Well, at least for the home games at the Garden, you can thank ACMI in part for its behind-the-scenes technical prowess. ACMI's field production coordinator, Anim the Dream Osmani, was tasked with laying cable throughout TD Garden inside and out. This is his video from the Garden before the first Celtics home game. All this cable is used so you can see the Celtics take on the Golden State Warriors in crystal clear high definition. It makes the parquet floor look as though it's in your foyer. We are proud to take part in such an important venture, and congrats, Anim. Great job. If you happen to scan the night sky on June 14th, you saw a very full and bright moon in the eastern sky. This video was taken by ACMI volunteer Wu Sofai from the area of Robbins Farm Park that Tuesday night. This breathtaking full moon is commonly known as the Strawberry Moon, a name that comes from the Algonquin Native American tribe in the northeastern U.S. and eastern Canada. The name refers to the region's strawberry harvesting season. This month, the moon happens to be at its closest distance to Earth in its orbit, making it a supermoon by most standards. And that video fills my heart with song and lets me sing forevermore. Rimshot, please. Well, that'll do it for this week's edition of ACMI News. Thanks for joining us. I'm James Milan. And I'm Summer Maxwell. Have a great week and enjoy the summer weather. And we will see you next week. From Studio A, take care. You can always check out our latest segments and newscasts on the web at acmi.tv news. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ACMI News. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You'll find us at youtube.com slash ACMI News. If you have any news tips for us or wish to become a citizen journalist, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at news at acmi.tv or stop by ACMI Studio A at 85 Park Avenue. <laughs>